Last night, I posted a video about Muhammad proposing marriage to a baby. What kind of man hears a baby cooing and thinks to himself, she's flirting with me? The same kind of man who had a dream about a six-year-old girl and concluded that God wanted him to marry her. In response to my awesome video, a Muslim posted this challenge from Muhammad Hakani. If you can point out any single small statement in Quran in which said marrying to a child is not prohibited, I am ready to accept Christianity rode. If you can point any statement from the complete Bible in which Jesus, peace be upon him, himself said, I am God, or you people worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity today. So, if I can show him a single small statement from the Quran which allows marriage to a child, Muhammad will become a Christian. Awesome, because it would be more difficult for me to rearrange my sock drawer than to show a Quran verse that allows marriage to children. According to the Quran, Muslim men can marry, have sex with, and divorce girls all before the girls have reached puberty. In Surah 2, verse 228 of the Quran, Allah revealed that if a Muslim man wants to divorce his wife, he should wait until she's gone through three monthly cycles, i.e. three monthly periods. That's the waiting period called the Idda. But the question later arose, what about wives who don't have monthly cycles? How long should their husbands wait to divorce them? The Quran answers this question in Surah 65, verse 4, where it gives divorce rules for three categories of wives who don't have monthly cycles. Women who don't have a monthly cycle because they're too old, girls who don't have monthly cycles because they're too young, and women and girls who don't have monthly cycles because they're pregnant. The verse declares that if Muslim men want to divorce girls who haven't yet reached puberty, they have to wait three months instead of three monthly cycles. The verse reads, And those of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them the idda, prescribed period, if you have doubt about their periods, is three months. And for those who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature, their idda, prescribed period, is three months likewise, except in case of death. And for those who are pregnant, whether they are divorced or their husbands are dead, their idda, prescribed period, is until they lay down their burden. And whosoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will make his matter easy for him. In case there's any confusion about the meaning of this verse, here are three classic Muslim commentaries on Surah 65, verse 4 of the Quran. Tafsir ibn Kathir. Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause, and that is the one whose menstruation has stopped due to her older age. Her idda is three months instead of the three monthly cycles for those who menstruate, which is based upon the ayah in Surat al-Baqarah, C2-228. The same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation. Their idda is three months like those in menopause. The young who have not reached the years of menstruation, i.e. prepubescent girls. Tafsir Jalalain, and as for those of your women who, yada yada, no longer expect to menstruate, if you have any doubts about their waiting period, their prescribed waiting period shall be three months. And also for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age, their period shall also be three months. Again, here we have rules for divorcing girls who had not yet menstruated because of their young age, i.e. prepubescent girls. Tafsir ibn Abbas, and for such of your women as despair of menstruation because of old age, if you doubt about their waiting period, their period of waiting shall be three months. Upon which another man asked, O Messenger of Allah, what about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation because they are too young? Along with those who have it not because of young age, their waiting period is three months. Notice, Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's cousin, gives the historical background. Muhammad was revealing the part about women in menopause 
when someone raised his hand and asked Muhammad about divorcing girls who do not have menstruation because they are too young, i.e. prepubescent girls. Muslim sources even link Allah's ruling in the Quran to Muhammad's marriage to Aisha. For instance, here's Sahih al-Bukhari 5133. Notice the chapter heading. Giving one's young children, not adults, giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. Why? By virtue of the statement of Allah, and for those who have no monthly courses, i.e. they are still immature, Surah 65 verse 4 of the Quran. And the idda, the waiting period for a divorce, for the girl before puberty, before puberty, before puberty, is three months in the above verse. And to illustrate Allah's ruling in the Quran, Bukhari quotes Aisha in Sahih al-Bukhari 5133. Narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. So, does the Quran allow Muslim men to marry children? Absolutely, obviously, indisputably. And what was the challenge? If you can point out any single small statement in Quran in which said marrying to a child is not prohibited, I am ready to accept Christianity, Rode. Muhammad, it's kind of dumb for Muslims to issue challenges like this. I can give a challenge and say, show me a single unequivocal statement in the Quran where Allah says that the gospel has been corrupted because I know what the Quran says. But Muslims don't know what the Quran says, and they certainly don't know what the Bible says. So it's just a bad idea to toss around challenges about sources when you're completely ignorant of what the sources say. You only know what your leaders and apologists tell you, and your leaders and apologists are the biggest bunch of liars the world has ever seen. So when I tell you something about Islam, and it's the opposite of what your leaders and apologists say, you think I'm lying because I'm contradicting your leaders and apologists. But now you can see from the Quran and the Hadith and your most respected commentaries that I'm right and your leaders and apologists are liars. Now, a deal's a deal, Muhammad, so I expect your next comment to be about converting to Christianity. And just so you know what you're supposed to believe about Jesus now that you're converting to Christianity, here's a video response to your other challenge. Where did Jesus say that he's God and that we should worship him? Watch the video and find out. See you in church.